Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. And this video is going to be really similar to one I just made, but I want to name it something other than I named it because we were working on uh, hexacons. And then, so I just named it part six or five of that. But this is really about random shapes. And if somebody just happens to be searching, they'll be able to find it. So I'm going to call this random shapes. So I'm going to make a square. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to fill the square in with black. I'm going to go and take away the outline. Probably doesn't matter. I'm going to go to effects, creative, and stained glass. And it's making shapes. And I'm going to go in a little bit more depth on this one. You can change the size of the shapes, which really wouldn't matter because you could also change, you know, enlarge it or small it. You could change this. The, the solder width is going to be the thickness of your cut line. So if you made one and it was a little bit thin, you could uh, type in 20 here and it's going to make your thicker lines and then you could do a lot more with it. But it is a fuzzy, uh, almost, you know, almost like a, a clip art now. So we need to take it and go up to bitmap and convert it to a bitmap black and white and say, okay, and then go to trace bitmap. I'm going to use outline trace clip art and it's going to take just a second. And the, the ones who are watching this second video on the same subject, it's quite a bit smaller than I was doing earlier. So now you have a, basically a cut line. And when I'm talking about a cut line, it, it's, it's going to be all these pieces Anything in black is going to stay. Anything in white, let's just do a, a yellow box around it Any, to make sure it's transparent. So I went to object, order, back a page. So anything in black is going to be your wood or your acrylic, and everything in yellow is going to fall out. This could be very handy. Um, I see myself using this if you needed to just run some basic shapes. So this is all together and what's, you know, that's actually your, your uh, smart feel. If you don't like one of the random shapes, you could change it. We need to go to object, ungroup it, group, ungroup. And let's say, you know, these look pretty cool. I don't like that one. Or that one looks like a triangle. I don't like it. Well, I haven't completely figured it out, but it's lines and it's actually double lines. So we're going to put a node there. And of course you probably wouldn't want to curve. So let's take away that, that line right there. So there's actually a, a double set of lines uh, here, but that doesn't matter. You could just keep deleting until you get what you want. And I'm sorry I went this way now because really what you can do when you get to a certain part, let's, uh, let's get rid of these nodes. All I did was hit delete. Let's take this and let's move it up. Well, I don't want to move it up like that. I want to right click and turn it into a line because then that way part of it's still a line. Then you can take your virtual segment delete key and delete that, but then you can do just the same thing on this side by moving this up maybe even delete that node and actually turn the handle. So it's, so you're what they're calling the solder will be the same. You could leave this line in the middle. It doesn't matter. You probably want to delete any extra line that you see like that, but what's going to happen now. So you've completely changed that. If you take your smart fill tool and fill this in, the smart fill is only going to go on the outside. So there's your smart fill and we've changed that one. Uh, now I don't even recognize it. We've changed it. Um, but you can see, well, there it is right there. It's kind of got a curve to it. And then what is so neat about it here that you can left click, right click. And this is an outline or a hairline, make it into a hairline, double click on it and make it a hairline. And if you wanted to do something, you know, inside of a circle, 
just draw an ellipse and select them both and go up to intersect. And then you've got an intersection of that. Now to do something like this, my suggestion would be to take the circle like five inches and make your nudge factor six. And there's your intersection, move it down, then move down your circle and move it down. And, and then there's several things you could do here, just color fill it and it's gonna stop at the circle and, or smart fill it. So you've got a completely different look. Random, random shapes. Anyway, I hope that helped a little bit and thank you for watching.